looking out across the cove at the mouth of the mighty Alligator River, where it pours forth in the Albemarle Sound. The state labels the waters of the Alligator outstanding resource waters, and they support a thriving blue crab fishery. There are black bear here, along with alligators, one known locally as Mr. Big, to give the river its name. Whether sailors have come down the eastern route of the waterway through Currituck Sound or the western route through the Dismal Swamp Canal, they would cross the Albemarle Sound and pick up the waterway here, heading south. Now we're in the Big Ditch, the Alligator to Pungo River Canal. It's one of five of these connecting cuts built by the Army Corps of Engineers in Eastern Carolina. The others are the one up at Coin Jock, the Goose Creek Island cut near Hoboken, the Adams Creek to Core Creek cut, and Snow's cut down at Carolina Beach. The Atlantic Intracoastal Waterway, a boon to recreational boats and commercial barge traffic alike, is a great asset to the state of North Carolina. In low-lying Bellhaven, altitude four feet, is an unusual museum of antiquities and oddities, started long ago by Mrs. Eva Way with a collection of buttons. This truly odd hodgepodge includes everything from pickled tumors and malformed critters to the wedding of two fleas. Such a display is bound to be why the eminent journalist, Robert, believe it or not, Ripley, was once a guest at Bellhaven's most famous hotel. That would be the River Forest Manor, built by a timber baron just over a century ago. For 60 years now, the Axon Smith family has owned and operated this big old white columned home on the river as a guest house, marina, and shipyard all rolled into one. Passers-by on the waterway can hardly fail to stop at this sailor's way station, whose watchwords have long been these. Coil up your ropes and anchor here till better weather doth appear. According to William Powell of North Carolina Gazetteer, it was Uncle Lou Midget who, just after the Civil War, first settled the Pamlico County community of Smith's Creek. But Uncle Lou's wife, Rebecca, had another idea what to call this place. She had found, so tis said, the nameplate of a Union sailing steamer that sank in the Atlantic Ocean off Pea Island early in the Civil War. So later, Rebecca and Uncle Lou renamed this little Noose River port after that federal ship, Oriental. People call Oriental North Carolina's sailing capital. 50 years ago, it was a real fishing center. With thousands of tons of shrimp, crab, and fish landed here every year. And Garland Fulcher Seafood Company, down by the town dock, is still strong in it. In 1959, when 342 million pounds of seafood were landed in North Carolina and commercial fishing peaked in our state, there were only three or four sailboats here in Oriental. Now, for every one permanent resident of this tiny Noose River town, three sailboats call Oriental their home port. 2,700 boats in all. Beaufort Fisheries at the east end of Front Street in Beaufort closed down not long ago, ending an era in which North Carolina was a leader in fishing for the Atlantic Menhaden, the pogey. The Indian word for Menhaden was munawadug, or fertilizer. Anyone who's ever smelled pogies boiling down for fish meal for feed and fertilizer has never forgotten their rich, pungent aroma. Outlanders new to the Beaufort area used to telephone this plant and asked them when they were going to stop burning those fish. 
We're not burning them, was always the reply. We're cooking them. Beyond Taylor's Creek lie Carrot and Horse Islands and the shallows of Town Marsh and Bird Shoal. These were the long ago haunts of the pioneering environmentalist, Rachel Louise Carson. Crossing the ridge of sand, she wrote, in the edge of the sea, one looks out over the shoal. If the tide still has an hour or two to fall to its ebb, one sees only a sheet of water shimmering in the sun. Rachel Carson threw herself into the life of what she called this great sprawling shoal. And now, as a three mile, 2,000 acre estuarine reserve, it forever bears her name. Phillips Island is one of the most visible and viewed of all Carolina's inner isles, with its red brick chimney standing out against the green thicket nearby. People in cars driving across the high span of the Newport River Bridge cannot help but have their eyes drawn to this spot of color to the north. Nowadays, it's an important part of North Carolina Audubon's chain of island sanctuaries for our colonial water birds. Long ago, the lone chimney served Melt Lee's Newport Fisheries, one of several Menhaden plants Carteret County once had. Local folks, now approaching 70, cannot recall the factory as a working place and believed it went out of business in the 1930s or 40s. In the salt grass beyond the chimney thicket stand a clutch of metal plates, rusty brown boxes wherein the Menhaden were once boiled down. The old fish plant finally burned one late September night in 1953. Hundreds of people drove out and parked the Beaufort to Moorhead Causeway to watch the great blaze. Past the big bridge to Emerald Isle and below Swansboro lies Hammocks Beach State Park. Its main features the huge salt marshes south of the waterway and 900 acre Bear Island beyond them. Several generations ago, a New York doctor named Sharp used to hunt hereabouts. He bought Bear Island with retirement here in mind and he was going to leave it to his African American hunting guide, John Hurst. No, Hurst said, directing the property instead to a group of black educators the North Carolina Teachers Association, which in the mid 20th century intended to develop it as a beach for black people. Those teachers though, eventually gave big beautiful bear, mostly sand dunes and maritime forest to the state of North Carolina. And now the island has rustic campgrounds and miles of wild beach for everyone. The waters around Hammocks Beach are still some of the best and cleanest in the Carolina realm. Thanks to the Clean Water Management Trust Fund, which since 1997 has put $29.5 million into protecting the White Oak River Basin. The sea beaches and estuarine waters of North Carolina really are a public trust. They belong to us all, and we're all stewards for our children, our children's children, and beyond.